Hi everyone, January 11, 2015, a terrific article written by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, posted on Global Research website, and I will link to it below. The U.S. police threat is too high. The hypocrisy of American police is beginning to bother even law and order conservatives. The New York Police Department is rivaling the black community in Ferguson and keeping alive the murders of their community members. We are constantly reminded of how dangerous it is to be a police officer. A total of 50 police officers were reportedly killed last year in the line of duty. 50 were killed in the line of duty, but the police themselves managed to kill 1,029 Americans during the same time period, most of whom were unarmed and innocent of wrongdoings. In other words, any encounter between the public and the police is more than 20 times more dangerous for the public than for the police. Why am I reading this so passionately? Because I can't stand the hypocrisy. And you know what? Anybody who decides to become a police officer, you absolutely have taken on the risk. That no, why do we glorify these people for assuming duties that they have voluntarily assumed? Why do we put them on a pedestal as if their life is more important than anybody who doesn't wear a badge? I, I can't stand this. You know, all the pop in circumstance of all of these funerals as if the police, you know, for some reason deserve it and their innocent victims who get shot by them don't get that pomp and circumstance because, what, they don't deserve it? Because they don't wear a badge? This is utter insanity. Okay, let me go on. That should raise questions about the absence of restraint on the ability of police to use deadly force as a first resort. Yet authorities and white communities invariably defend police violence against the public. If Americans had half decent educations, Americans would know that power comes from precedent. The police, like the executive branch, have now established themselves above the law. And we're seeing this over and over and over again on a daily basis that the police can steal your property and they've decided to put it under this category called civil forfeiture. And we're allowing that to happen. They're literally stealing Americans' property, stealing their cash, stealing their homes. Civil forfeiture, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please do the research. But they're also gunning people down and <laughs> They still seem to keep their jobs and just go on, gunning people down for no reason. And there is a whole lot of videos that actually show the police shooting unarmed victims or brutalizing them, beating them, beating them to death, beating them and putting them in the hospital for no reason. And we're allowing this to continue. That's what gets me really upset. The police, like the executive branch, have now established themselves above the law. The laws that apply to the public do not apply to police, U.S. presidents, presidential appointees, NSA, and CIA, and a whole lot more. The URLs right here, which you can come over here, click on it, and watch. Yet another killing of a police, of, of an unarmed man. But this provides... Two short videos of Montana police officer Grant Morrison shooting to death in separate incidences. Two unarmed drivers pulled over by Morrison in routine traffic stops. In both cases, Morrison's first actions are to scream obscenities and pull the trigger. <laughs> Morrison comes across as completely crazed. It is inexplicable that Montana permits an armed lunatic to roam the streets pulling over cars. And you try doing that and keep your job. <laughs> Clearly, the police are privileged and thereby unaccountable. 
According to the news reports, during eight years of what is called the Iraq War, more U.S. citizens, listen to this, listen to this, more U.S. citizens were murdered by the police than U.S. soldiers were killed in the war. In other words, U.S. police are a greater threat to Americans than enemy forces are to U.S. soldiers who have invaded a foreign country. The other day I heard a New York police commissioner on NPR defend the New York police violence against Eric Gardner that resulted in Gardner and Garner's death. The police commissioner said that Garner, listen, this is utter insanity, listen to this. The police commissioner said that Garner more or less brought on his own death by not quickly cooperating with police orders. Comply, obedience and compliance. That's what it's come down to here in this country. Even if you haven't broken any law, even, it, it, it doesn't matter. Obey, obey the authorities. Oh, it makes me so, so incredibly angry and sick to my stomach how many Americans are afraid and they capitulate and they submit and they do obey. Even if it is in violation of their constitutional rights. This is why this is happening. This is why they're getting away with it. Because too many people submit. Okay, so, yeah, that's why he died. Because he didn't quickly cooperate with police orders when asked if selling single cigarettes out of a pack was a sufficiently dangerous act to justify police use of prohibited, prohibited chokeholds. Prohibited chokeholds? In other words, they were prohibited to use the chokehold that killed him. And they're still walking the streets. Okay. Well, the commissioner said that Garner's single cigarette sales were depriving New York City of hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenues. That's, that's worthy of holding him in a chokehold, which is prohibited, that ends up killing him. And we all heard him say, I can't breathe. All right. Well, this police commissioner actually said that Garner's single cigarette sales were depriving New York City of hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenues that could be used for more and better schools and hospitals. I was surprised to learn that selling Lucy's was a billion dollar business. Somehow that seems hard to believe, as everything else is, that the authorities tell us other countries manage to have police forces that do not indiscriminately gun down their citizens, yet most Americans will support the police until it happens to them. But keep in mind that every time you get in your car, you have placed yourself in far greater danger from police than you face from terrorists. That's right. I don't know about you guys, but what's happening in this country is rather upsetting to me.